All right, well, Mitch is in the background, so you guys know what that means. We're doing a cabinet of chaos. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to start getting back on like a regular Monday schedule. We've had some crazy going ons uh, around here with the gardening schedule and a very sick little dog that's been sick for several weeks. But fortunately, we've got all that cleared up. She's much better now, so we can kind of calm down and get back into what we were doing before and this time I've decided let's just go ahead and add this cabinet back here also because it's getting to be a cabinet of chaos so I thought maybe we would just nip it in the bud so let's go ahead I'm gonna close my eyes Mitch is gonna go back there he has free reign of either cabinet he wants and to pick any ingredient out of it and then I have to fix something from it that hopefully tastes good so let's go ahead and let him get started Okay. <laughs> Jell. <laughs> Are you serious? Pudding? Vanilla pudding. Okay. Do I something different with it though. Okay, so I can't make this just straight from the box. You're wanting something fancy out of it yeah. then. Okay. So I've had this for a while. Uh it don't worry, it's still in date. And yeah, okay, so we're gonna take this um, little plain box of vanilla pudding and we're gonna make a fancy dessert out of it that will hopefully taste good. So I guess I've got some searching to do to see what I can do with this to make it, uh, you know, better than just plain right out of the box. So hopefully I will come up with something really good. So it's been a couple days since Mitch got our dessert out of the other cabinet of chaos and I think I found the perfect thing to use it with. So let me go ahead and show you. About three years ago, I had picked up this Magic of Jello for just one dollar at a thrift store and I think this is the perfect thing to make with this pudding. It looks like it's really going to be good. Mitch really loves cheesecake. I think this is going to replicate that uh, somewhat. So I think he's really going to like it. It doesn't have a picture of it uh, with this one. So we're just going to have to make it and then see what it looks like after. As far as this little cookbook, I actually really enjoy it. It was first published in 1998, but I've got the 2010 reprint of it and it has a lot of really fun recipes in here this is um the section for kids it's got a lot of really fun things in that one um this actually looked pretty fun i almost thought about doing that but i think it's too simplistic we needed to do something a little special with this but you've also got like your uh mousses and shakes and different things you can do uh, with all kinds of jello make your own pudding snacks and then you've got you know your fruit combinations which look really good one thing i've really wanted to try is this i think that looks so cute and i think that is such a fun way to use jello so this summer i might be doing that just to see what it looks like and if i can actually replicate that it's got some really beautiful desserts and it seems like jello and pudding was really popular from the 50s um all the way up into the 90s and then it just kind of seemed like it fell out of you know the zeitgeist so to speak but you know with beautiful desserts like this i think we might need to try to bring jello back these are really perfect for summer. I think it's nice and a cool treat. You know, that would be really good at a picnic, a family reunion, that kind of thing. 
I especially like this one. Uh, I might actually try to make this one too. I do have some molds, so it would be fun to try to replicate that. I think it's really pretty, and I can't imagine anyone not wanting to eat that. So I've got our pan and I've got all of the rest of the ingredients that we're going to need sitting out and ready. Um, there's no cooking this, so that's gonna be really good for us. We just have to put it together, let it chill, and then eat it. basically made a pudding lasagna so I think this is gonna be really good all we have to do now is put it in the freezer for two hours and then after that we'll just let it sit on the counter for 20 minutes and to eat it we'll put a little bit of this cherry filling on top of each bar so let's go ahead and do that and get that in the freezer so we can hurry up and get those two hours over with and if you're wondering uh, what I did with my little harvest of purple peas, um, this is just a few more that I found. I'll just eat these raw. But um, the first one batch, I actually had enough to make something out of. And so one day, a couple days ago, while I was making a really big pot of vegetable soup that also turned out really good, I decided to saute these as kind of a side dish with a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and garlic, you know, just to keep it really simple so the flavor of the pea pods could really shine through. And they were so good. I would highly recommend growing these if you've got a trellis and a space for it. Um, if not, if you can go to a farmer's market and maybe find someone who's selling purple peas, they're worth a try because, you know, they have a really good flavor and I've really enjoyed, uh, you know, cooking them because as you cook them, this beautiful purple color actually starts to get shiny and shine through even more vibrant. So they're super fun to eat. And now let's go ahead, like I said, get this done because I know when Mitch takes his lunch break, he is going to want to try this so bad. I went ahead and pulled this out of the freezer a little bit early uh, just so I could make sure Mitch could have some on his lunch break. So it's probably not going to cut as well as it would if I would have left it in for the t uh, like full two hours. But that's okay. I'm just going to sneak a little piece now and we'll stick it back in the freezer to finish later. And let me show you what it looks like. As you can see, not that much different. Um, It's not, you know, it's cold. It's kind of like... um maybe frozen custard you know kind of like an ice cream type of um texture but i think it'll be okay to cut we really just want to hurry up and try this so let's go ahead and get us some squares and we're gonna see how this tastes all right this is probably not gonna cut oh actually it is 
Oh, that actually lifted out really well. Mm. Okay, that looks cute. Okay, let's try it. This looks so good. Wow. Mm. Oh man. That's like the best part of a cheesecake without being too heavy like a cheesecake. Does that make sense? Definitely. It, like it's not super dense. It's not mm. real heavy. The fruit kind of like, I think the fruit adds a little bit of like, a little bit of like a tangy. Mm. Like the cherries, you know how like they, they've got a little bit of acid that kind of keeps you drooling for the next bite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like the first and the last thing you taste, but the smoothness. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, seriously, look at how beautiful that is. I mean, this one, okay. okay. If the rest of the recipes are like this, I would definitely say pick this up, especially if you really love jello and pudding. Or if you just want some nostalgia in your life, you know, bringing back some uh, desserts that maybe you enjoyed in the 80s and 90s, um, you know, I think that would be fun. Some of these desserts in here, I actually remember, you know, at family <laughs> functions, you know, church functions, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, back in the 80s and 90s and they're just as good now as they were then. Yeah, you know I mean this is kind of a favorite dessert now. <laughs> this is perfect for summer Yeah, because it's chilled. It's tasty. It hits that spot just perfect on a hot summer's day If you bring this to a family function, it's gonna be gone Like you're yeah. not bringing <laughs> leftovers back. No so there, you know yeah. what? You picked really good. So yeah, he gave me, you know, this a random box of plain vanilla pudding <laughs> and we made a beautiful summer dessert out yeah. of it that is one of our favorites. I was actually going to give some to uh, my parents because it makes such a big pan. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think we got to worry about this one going back. I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they're going to get too much. Um, but no, we'll probably give them some of it. But yeah, it's is, I think this is going to be a favorite of everyone's. Yeah, it's very good. So there you go. Another installment of Cabinet of Chaos. Mitch did a great job picking what turned out to be an awesome dessert that we cannot wait to keep eating. And so we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up so we can really dig in. So who knows for next week to see what's gonna happen, but uh, hope you make this, uh, hopefully this week, because I think you're really gonna love it. So we'll see you soon and thanks for watching. Bye. And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, here's two more videos you might enjoy. And make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.